Hello everybody, Glass Half Dead here, and welcome to my Kill Team Battle Report, it's Custodes vs Tyranids. We're going to be playing Mission 2.1, Escalating Hostilities, which is the one where you remove objective markers closest to your deployment zone in the second and third initiative phases. The Custodes have gone all Custodian Guard, no Sisters of Silence to be seen, and the Tyranids have gone Tyranid Warriors and 8 Hormigans. Just so you know what this format is, we're going to be looking at this lovely White Dwarf-esque battle map for the majority of it, and we're getting each move with lovely arrows pointing so you can't miss a single thing, even if it's not important, we will just skip straight past it nice and quickly. But you will know it happens. There's also going to be some lovely cinematic shots up on screen next to the movement. It's going to be an absolute visual feast for you. I'm going to work through the game as quickly as I can and the majority of this video hopefully is actually going to be discussion points. At the end of each turning point I'm going to discuss how I think things went for both teams. Before the game even begins I'm going to discuss why did that particular roster muster that way? Why Hormigans instead of Gene Sealers? Why no Sisters of Silence? Why take security? Why take that archetype? And then I'm even going to go so far as to show you when I randomly drew the tack ops, why did I choose hold the line over damage limitation, for example. I'm going to point out rules mistakes throughout the entire thing that I've made, and also at the end of the video, of course, I'm going to give a final total thought summary on how everything went, why I think it went that way. Check the timestamps below to jump to where you want to hear the discussion. And before we kick off, I have to say, you all know it's coming. If you're a subscriber to my channel, I'd like to give you a big circle hello. My gosh, wasn't that wholesome? My gosh, don't you just love this in-depth Kill Team content? Well, if you want more of it, subscribe, like, leave a comment, hit the notification bell. And if you really like it, check me out on Patreon because that's the best way you can actually support me and tell me that you want more of these. First up, we have Talons of the Emperor. Let's get something out of the way quickly. Yes, these are not Custodian Guard models, but they are on 40mm bases, and so it doesn't really matter. I thought they looked cooler than the way that I painted my Custodian Guard, so I'm using Alaris Terminators and Trajan Valurus. So sue me. I decided against using any Sister to Battle because I haven't painted any. I went with Seek and Destroy for their archetype, mainly because I knew I was up against Tyranids, Unless they decide to go Tyranid Warriors, they are going to be outnumbering me at least 2 to 1, which means I'm going to be doing a lot of killing. And you know what? That's exactly what Custodian Guard do. They're durable, they kill things easily, because you're hitting everything on 2s, and you're doing acceptable damage. Looking at the screen now, the top line are the tac Ops that I ended up picking. The bottom line is the tac Op they went up against when I was drawing them out. So my first pick was Execution and Challenge. This seemed like a no-brainer. Challenge is a very telegraphed tack op. When you pick that, in the first turning point, you pick an enemy model and you say, I'm going to kill that guy for VP. This always gives the opponent the ability to hide that model from the model that needs to kill them. Execution, kill more models. Yes, always pick execution in this scenario. Easy peasy. Route versus deadly marksman. Route, you can start scoring that from turn 2 on was without much of a problem to be honest with you. Get stuck in, start killing. Easy stuff, that's the whole point of Seek and Destroy. Deadly Marksman, again this is just limiting yourself, you have to select a model that does the killing. At that point if the enemy really, if it comes down to it, they can hide from the Marksman most likely. Robin Ransack versus Headhunter, I don't know where they're going to be deploying the leader, I know that I am going to be killing models in melee. Rob and Ransack every time. Again, a very easy option. Three of the models, except the leader, took Oath Parchment, which gives them one tactical reroll for free throughout the game. Misericordia, you never need that. You're killing things too easily. Tank or Foot Grenade, to be honest, I didn't want the hassle of thinking about it. Especially now that we're three APO instead of four, you're not always guaranteed to get it off. You're needing to do other things. So Oath Parchment seems the obvious choice from now on for Custodians for me. When it comes to the High Fleet, I went 3 Warriors and 8 Hormigants. When it comes to equipment, I just gave 5 Hormigants Acid Moors. The general idea there is that because they're hitting on 2s, I can run up, 
I can probably get a little bit of consistent damage into the custodians through weight of dice instead of high damage. That's right, all of my Hormigans, the plan is to die. Then with my three warriors, they are equipped as they look. I've got the Venom Cannon, I've got Bone Swords with a Death Spitter, and then I've got Scything Talons with a Devourer. It's the leader in the middle there that has the Death Spitter. I gave the Devourer to the normal person because that lets them reroll ones, which is a benefit because they are hitting on fours, whereas the leader hits on threes. I don't really have a huge preference between Bone Swords and Scything Talons. Normally I would go Bone Swords, but that's how that model was equipped. Either way, it's four dice doing four six damage. It's just whether you're a lethal five up or a balanced. Over to the Tac Ops now. I'll be honest, I didn't know which archetype to pick. I went with security. Seek and destroy was an obvious no-go straight away because I'm not guaranteed to kill custodies. Security, eh, the other option because of the Hormigans was recon. I went with security. At the end of the day, if I were to do this again, I would probably try recon. I never felt that certain with security and I'll go through why now. Hold the line came up against damage limitation. This was a no-brainer. Damage limitation is don't die, so I can't take that, obviously. Central control versus protect assets. Protect assets is kill a model when it's on a point. I can't guarantee to kill custodians, therefore central control was a default pick regardless of my thoughts on its viability. Finally, we went up against seize ground and plant banner. With this many hormigants, I think actually Plant Banner isn't the craziest idea. You can give it on to one of them, charge all of them up the board, it's a complete decoy and bluff, and one of them should get through, right? I went with Seize Ground because I, I like that Seize Ground mixes with Central Control very well. Uh, it gives you a real focus for the game to, to play around. The plan with the Tyranids is relatively simple. I want to kamikaze all of the Hormigans into the Custodians. I want to use all of those Acid Moors to get through damage before getting one or two hits on the charge in melee, which even my Hormigans can manage. The Talons of the Emperor, on the other hand, I haven't seen them played with 3 APL yet, so this is my first time seeing what they can do post-nerf. Mentally, I'm still scared. But in theory, I should be better off, so let's just see how that goes. The main benefit here is that they changed Brotherhood of Demigods, which means I know that they can't get a turn 1 charge by using Brotherhood of Demigods to move up the board and then charge me and kill two models. Looking at the deployment there, you can see that on the Tyranid side, wherever there's a little red token, that's one of the Hormigants that has an Acid Maw. Custodians decided to be defenders because they really wanted to stop the enemy from having the deployable vantage point on their side. So they made themselves defenders. Uh, and then they also won the scouting phase and opted to go first. The idea there being that they would be able to get more overwatch usage out of themselves. Tyranids, all of them are on a conceal order. That's pretty obvious, pretty basic why. Uh, except for two of the Tyranid Warriors, the Leader and the Venom Cannon. Obviously, I want them to remain a threat throughout the entire game. I found that if you don't put anything onto an Engage Order Turn 1 for your own safety, it's too permissive for the opponent. I picked the pre-game dash with them. Custodians, however, picked Infiltrate, allowing them to flip one of their orders from a Conceal to an Engage if they want to. When it comes to ploys, nobody declares anything Normally, Custodians are going to play Peerless Warrior, allowing them to shoot and fight twice. But with so many models on a conceal, it's clearly just not considered worthwhile. Especially now that they're 3 APO instead of 4, which is a huge difference when it comes to the validity of playing Peerless Warrior. Into the first turn here, and we see the Custodian Guard has gone up top there. Notice there was a Tyranid move at the bottom left there. That was actually the pre-game dash that they picked in the scouting phase. So, uh, up to the Custodian Guard, he manages to get a line of sight on one of the models. He unloads into it and only does 6 damage, and that is a live Hormigant, so what can you do? Then have the Tyranids moving up, they both go on to points. One of them is the one that's down to 1 health left, the other just moves up because that's, his, that's the life he's living. Custodian Guard here immediately moves off of the vantage point. Let me very briefly explain this vantage point to you and why it is such a nightmare. In reality, it probably should have been turned to be facing the board at a slightly different angle. 
but those two big oil rig barrel canister things that you see there that the Custody Guard had been deployed behind are over one inch thick and because they are heavy they therefore cannot be shot through because that's how cover lines work. So he was only able to get a teeny tiny slither of a cover line around them from the side of his base but actually after I looked at the sight lines again I realized there's no way this guy's going to shoot anything so we moved on. So moved him onto the point so he's not only holding a point scoring VP etc but also is actually in a much better position to deal some damage. Two Horgans move on to the point because that's the kind of thing they do. Custodian Guard moves up and doesn't have anything to shoot at so yeah he just moves up. We have a few more turns where Hormigants are moving, Custodes are moving, Tyranids are moving. We then get the Custode uh, getting his overwatch shot on one of the models that he could see and that is a dead Hormigant. Then we have the Venom Cannon shooting into the Custode Guard up top and <laughs> You know, sometimes when you're doing a, a battle report like this, you do have to put the dice that you legitimately rolled into shot. Because two crits, two hits. This is an AP1 gun. The custody only gets to roll two dice. I rolled a four and a one. It is what it is. And for those of you struggling with the maths, that does 18 damage. Oh, man. That's rough. That is rough. Let me tell you, that's rough. Hormigans continue moving up, getting into position. Tyranid Warrior moves up, gets off another shot. Obviously nothing anywhere near is devastating, only does 4 damage. Then at the end of the turn, Custodes, a Brotherhood of Demigods. This has been FAQ'd since what you see appearing on screen. Now, essentially, you can use it at the end of the turn to do and perform an Overwatch action. And sure enough, I do, however, this is actually a misplay of the rules because although yes Brotherhood of Demigods in its new FAQ'd form allows you to perform an overwatch you still have to be legal to perform that overwatch yes it's a free overwatch but that does not matter this model already overwatched so this was a mistake regardless I didn't figure this out till much later he ends up dealing 11 damage to this warrior Overhead shot now, let's have a think about how turn 1 went. Uh, you know what, I'm, I'm totally going to take that. Tyranids being able to get 18 damage through on a Custode is amazing turn 1. So the Custode chose not to retain a cover save, that's because you're roll you need 2 ups. And the Tyranid had rolled crits, so I was fishing for a crit. Instead I rolled a 1. Ouch, that's how life goes, I guess. I'm just, this is the school, that this is the hard knock school of life I'm living here. And that's why the custody leader is down to one wound. That's on me, my bad. Probably should have CP re-rolled, I suppose, but I didn't. From the Tyranid perspective, okay, I've lost a Hormigant, that's fine. Okay, one's down to one wound, that's fine. And I've taken 11 damage on a warrior. All in all, that's not terrible. Now obviously this is where things start to get a bit hairy, but as the Tyranid, my entire plan had been to get my Hormigans within acid more range and then just hope I roll really well. Uh, like they are suicide bombs, so this is fine. Nothing really happened, like turn 1 for the Tyranids was amazing because of that 18 damage, but the actual thrust of the Tyranid plan happens now in turn 2. From the Custode's perspective, this was not a great turn. Obviously, having the leader taken down to one wound left is pretty big. That was very unlucky, but you know, I suppose, yeah, that was on a, I'm a, I'm just going to say that was luck. I'm not even going to say it was a misplay. That probably is where the leader should be. There you go. Sometimes dice get you. Custode's could have played a cagey game focusing everything all around the central uh, building so that they're always having cover and trying their absolute best to chop their way through all of the hormigants to get to the big scary venom cannon but uh, i i don't think this was a misplay moving into turning point two and we have 
Moving into turning point two, and we have Tyranids playing Feed because this is the turn where they get stuck in. So most of them, I suspect, are going to die this turn. They will each be doing one extra damage, which might just be enough to tip things over to them winning. Whereas the Custodes are playing Peerless Warrior because again, this is the turn where everything has to happen. They need those double shots, those double fights. Moving up, we get Hormigant 1 firing his Acid more into Custodian Leader and we get Hormigant 5 firing his Acid more into Custodian Guard number 2. Custody Leader, dead. That's just how it is. When you're hitting on 2 ups and you manage to roll 2 up on 4 dice, that does 1 damage to a Custody. That's how dice maths work, that's the mechanic of the game. Literally nothing this Custodian Guard could do. He had 4 hits against him, that's a dead Custody. And then on Hormigant number 5, we see somewhat the flip of that. He still had all four of his shots go through but the custodian guard saved all three of his and so the acid more only actually does three damage which then ends exactly how you would expect and custodian guard kills both of them easy peasy lemon squeezy except we have another misplay yes this is bad isn't it <laughs> do i get points for calling it out so what's happened here is he has charged fought, fought, and then shot. Guys, I forgot in this instance that Custodians were only 3 APL. Yeah, this is pretty bad. I accept that. I acknowledge that. I realize that I am playing Custodies right now as if they didn't get a nerf. <laughs> I've done Peerless Warrior as if that was a regular shoot action. And now I've gone ahead and I've done an APL4 custody action. So he charged, fought, fought, shot and killed the Venom Cannon. That's all I can say. Is this going to greatly affect the outcome of this game? Let's find out, I guess. Well, you know what? The Acid more trick continues. These two Hormigants activate. Yes, that's the one with uh, only one health remaining. But he is within red of a warrior and therefore is not suffering from injured. With their power combined, they deal a whopping 12 damage to this Custode. Not bad at all. This is exactly what they were there to do. They run in, they deal a bunch of damage with their Acid more, and then, yep, they get absolutely massacred, as they should. So, Custode moves up, that's a charge, that is one action. Fight, fight, that is two dead dudes. He then does not perform a fourth action because I don't know if you know this guys, they can't do that. We then have the Tyranid Warrior down at the bottom there who is the leader, take a shot at the Custodian and actually does a remarkable amount of damage considering that there's no AP, AP on this gun, dealing a solid nine damage to this Custodian in cover. That's nuts, but it is what it is, so be it. Then the warrior falls back uh, because he didn't want to die, which he probably would have. He could have been charged, I think. This custody now actually, and this is probably a misplay, but does nothing. He wants to stay on the point. It is what it is. Two Hormigants move up. One of them does his acid more onto the custody on the northern point again taking him down to only 9 health remaining, so that's another 3, 6 damage, whatever that was. Then the Custode overwatches him and kills him. And then for some reason this Hormigant charges in. Now why did this Hormigant charge in? It took me a while to figure out why as I was playing this back. It's because I played Feed in this turn, so he's doing an additional damage. Apparently the Tyranids are going all in. We then have the Tyranid Warrior make the big charge into the Custody on the point and kills him. He had been left on the point with only 6 wounds remaining. That is a dead dude. Don't forget, again, these scything talons he's got can do, I think it's 4-5, uh, I'm going to say Relentless. With Feed you're doing an additional damage. Boom. That's a dead Custody. And because this was the final activation of the turn, this custodian guard at the back doesn't get to do a free overwatch 
and the Custodians are opting to not Peerless Warrior again. Custodian up top scores Rob and Ransack, whereas Tyranids had scored Central Control last round but failed to get it this time because they charged out of the 3 inches of the centre, but they do score Hold the Line this time. Custodies do also get an easy execution. From the Custodes perspective, this is bad. They are down not just to two models remaining, but two models on very few wounds remaining. They aren't quite sure how this happened. They just assume that the Acid Moor thing must have worked, they guess. From the Tyranid perspective, this is looking okay, but... The Tyranids only actually have two Warriors and one Hormigant left on the board. This has been an absolute bloodbath. Yes, that was the point of the Hormigants, but it's kind of scary to lose so many models. Going into turn point three, and the Tyranids get initiative and they play feed again because they're going to have to be charging and killing. If they're not killing this turn, they're probably dying this turn. Custodes, on the other hand, are terrified, and so both Peerless Warrior and Aegis of the Emperor, because not only do they need offense, they also need defense. But the Tyranids know what is up, and so they immediately play Will of the Hive Mind on the warrior that is going to charge this Custodian Guard down here. This gives them an extra APL. So this warrior is now 3 APL. He charges, he fights. For your own interest, I have put up the rolls that they both rolled on screen. So the Tyranid charges in, he's needing to deal 9 damage before the opponent can deal 18 damage. This is good odds, but when you roll 3 crits and a hit and your opponent rolls and your opponent rolls 2 crits and 3 hits, you've got to consider, do you block, do you attack, and vice versa, as the custodian you've got to be thinking, do I block? until they are spent and then attack and this was actually very close i had to stop and really think about it and work out all the permutations ultimately though the tyranid takes it and just attacks 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 does end up taking 14 damage that is what two crits will do to you but still better to just put the hits through than attempt to stop and block any of their strikes and then I pay for that. Custodian Guard moves up, manages to get a clean cover line to the Tyranid Warrior, gets a shot because who cares about being injured, deals the last four damage to the, to the Warrior, deals the last four damage to the Warrior and is still on the point. Tyranids move up so that they're holding the point, and then the Warrior moves up but isn't able to get a cover line, so just that's all they can do. At the end of turning point three, the Tyranids max both hold the line and central control, whereas the Custodes are in line to still to pick up Robin Ransack, but uh, uh, severely lacking on both execution and route there. And oh man, in turning point four, the final turn, Custodes cannot catch a break. They really kind of needed to go first here, but because the Custodian Guard here only had three health left and the Tyranids managed to uh, take initiative, it's a charge and an instant death, and that is Custodes tabled. To be fair, they were tabled in the final round, but there's literally nothing they could have done in this instance. Which means that Tyranids managed to max hold the line, central control and seize ground, whereas the Custodes, well, they didn't do great. They lost the second Robin Ransack, they never scored route, they had wildly overestimated their ability to get past the swarm and start killing in the other half of the board. And they managed to score execution twice. And the final score, all in all, was Tyranids at 15, Custodes at 10. At the end of the game now, Tyranids, I think they got really lucky in that round one, getting that 18 damage through on one of the Custodes. That was, I mean, that obviously decided the game and okay there were a few misplays like the 4 APL custode there the overwatch twice custode I'm um, you know this it was far from a perfect game and whilst I think that the custodes suffered a little bit from luck of the dice there I actually don't think there was anything that happened in this game that was 
super crazy, apart from the one Venom Cannon shot. As the Tyranid player, I was really happy with the tactical decisions made, and more so than the tactical decisions, the strategic decisions of I'm going to charge a swarm into my Custodes, and I'm going to charge five Acid Moors into the Custodes, and just see what that happens. I had never played that approach before. In fact, I don't play Tyranids all that much. And due to the way feed works, I do believe that this strategy was better than if I had run Gene Stealers. If I had run Gene Stealers, then I shouldn't have done the Acid Moor ability, because Gene Stealers are still going to die to Custodes shooting and melee just as easily as my Hormigans did. But in this way, I managed to get a few extra pips of damage, a little bit of chip damage on a melee after having done the Acid Moor. Whereas the Gene Stealers would have just run up, Acid Mord, and that would have been them done. And then you have to think, well, why am I acid mooring when I could just be meleeing and I could have spent my equipment points on something else? I do also think as the Tyranids that getting initiative every turn apart from the first was actually really useful for me. So the strategy worked and the tactics worked and I got a little bit lucky on dice, I can't lie. On the flip side, as the Custodes player, I don't know how to play Custodes. Okay, so obviously, uh, as a content creator, I'm trying to spread myself a, a touch too thin, maybe, and I don't have a main, and it's never been Custodes, that's for sure. I've played them twice, I think. The first time on stream, the second time for this battle report. So I'm far from an expert player with them, but man, I'm not good at Custodes. I think it's possible that I'm relying too much on them being too more durable than they really are. And so they just get wrecked because I'm putting them out in the open, they're dying, they're having to face off an entire swarm of dudes where I should have held back for a turn. I don't exactly know, to be honest with you. Regardless, they did die, and they died very effectively. To be able to stay in the game at all, I really did need initiative on turn 4. That was obviously just luck of the dice, as whoever had charged the other there would, would have gotten the kill. I'm sure that some people are here to see insightful takes on how they, on how I feel the nerf went for Talons, but um, as I just said, I suck at playing Talons, so I don't know. Okay everybody, that's the end of this battle report, thank you very much for watching if you made it this far, and if you have made it this far, if you could drop me a comment letting me know what you thought of this format, I'm still trying to figure things out, obviously this time. The overhead map, the animation there was a little bit more uh, in-depth. We got to see every single move. I assume that was helpful. Hopefully my commentary added enough to it. And hopefully I didn't butcher it all in the edit. Anyway, a huge thanks to all of my, the patrons of this channel. This is their beautiful legendary names on screen right now. None of this would be possible without you guys. Thank you very much. If you would like to get your name on this screen, I'd love to have you over on Patreon. Thank you very much. And of course, the final question, as must always be asked in a battle report, which factions would you guys like to see in a battle report next? Thank you very much, everybody. This has been Glass Half Dead. I hope you've had a good day and continue to have a good day. Goodbye.